My name is David Sang, and I started off as a research physicist actually when I was about 30, and then I trained to teach, and I taught um, in a sixth form college in Huddersfield in Yorkshire, and then <coughs> at Sheffield Poly, as it was then, which became ha Hallam University, and then I went moved down to Sussex, and I taught in a high school down there. And <coughs> I gradually got into writing resources, working on curriculum and development projects and writing textbooks and that's what I've been doing really most of my time for the last 20 years or so. So uh, <coughs> I've been involved in writing a lot of books but also on projects like, particularly things that interest me are things like Institute of Physics projects like Charles mentioned, Teaching Advanced Physics and Practical Physics, so I've worked on those and uh, things for the Nuffield Foundation which doesn't actually do the same things anymore and uh, various other educational organisations, but also for commercial publishers. So I've written commercial textbooks for any level of GCSE and so on. And, um, okay, so that's my background. Uh, you are all brand new physics teachers, which is very nice to know. And uh, so what I would really like to know is where, in the teaching you've been doing up till now, where have you been getting resources from? you just use things that the school says you've got to use or do you have you tried writing your own have you shared with other people do you look on websites I think it's been a bit mixed really quite a lot on tests there's a, obviously quite a good source of uh, resources um, the school system does have quite a lot of resources as well here and there generally adapt them a little bit to, to your specific needs yeah and um, occasionally I find myself writing a few more resources than I'd probably like because it does, it is time consuming, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But I do find it very useful because once I have written a resource, then I really feel like I can make a bit of ownership and really, can really use it. Yeah, effectively. yeah. Anybody, anything very different from that? I teach um, most of the um, edits and publications on there. It's one of the software that I have. Is that for GCSE? Yeah, well, yeah. I teach for it. It's in GCSE and for. Okay. And also CDP publications I use quite a lot. Yeah. So okay. summary, you know, summarise my findings. Yeah. Or to formulate a new worksheet and things like that. Yeah. Okay. And obviously schools all the time the school. just accumulate masses and masses of PowerPoints. Yes. And and you, yeah. And yeah. And how on earth do you find the ones you want? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, Right, so that really covers mo most of the different sources that there are. And when I was asked to do this workshop, which I, I did run it in uh, back in March, I think, uh, with a, well, on a Saturday, um, I thought, well, we can't sit and just, you know, I can't just ask you to sit and write some resource or other. So I thought, well, I'll you go to the Times Ed uh, website and see, <coughs> find some things there. And uh, have you, how many of you had a chance to look at this in advance? Were they emailed out to us? They were emailed out to you. I'll pass. I'll give you copies anyway. So uh, the idea was that you would um, uh, that uh, <coughs> you look at you could look at these uh, worksheets. They're all to do with the electromagnetic spectrum. I thought when I looked at the TES website, I would find some. Uh, a load of rubbish because uh, I have looked before and found some really bad stuff that were, was completely, you know, the physics was wrong, which is a pretty bad starting point. Uh, but actually, I was quite surprised by some of the things here, quite inventive and, you know, interesting. And <coughs> I thought that um, uh, it would be a useful place to start having a look at some of these things and think about what it is that makes a good worksheet a good worksheet and what you might do to them to improve them. If you haven't had a chance to look at them, I think what we might do is spend about three minutes. The, f the sheet on the front is a list of bits of terminology that we're going to discuss and that I would like you to think about as you look through, think about what do these different words mean. Okay? So you might like to just jot some ideas down, flip through the sheets, the worksheets, and then uh, write down, <laughs> make some notes about what you think some of these things mean. Some of them are more obvious than others. And, uh, um, and then we'll, as I say, we'll give you five minutes and then we'll, we'll talk about what some of these things mean and why they're important and what you can do about them. David, do we need to answer these things? Yeah, uh, you don't need to, no, don't answer those, but okay. just uh, see the sheet on the front. Okay. Just 
think about what you might what, write a few notes in there about what these terms are. But you need to maybe look at the worksheets to get because we'll be referring to them as we go along. Okay, I think we'll we'll in order to get a reasonable amount done in this session, we'll we'll just uh, we'll start talking now and. I'll begin by, since you haven't had maybe a long time to look at the worksheets, I'll just go through briefly and say what, describe them so that you know what we're talking about. This one has got some statements and you're asked to say whether they're true or false or partly true. Uh, they say they're all about the electromagnetic spectrum. This one is, uh, you have some boxes of te text at the bottom. You've got to put them in their correct places in the table to, d uh, to do with uses and effects on living tissue of different types of radiation. This one is a, a diary sheet where you're supposed to, the student is supposed to think about their day and where electromagnetic radiation of different types comes into it and write it, write it out as a diary. This one is a word loop, which means you have all these cards that have each has got uh, an answer and a question on it and the kids have to get, get one each and they have to go around the room, get themselves into a ring in the room so that their question is answered by the person next to them and so on round. Has anybody ever used that kind of thing? What are you supposed to do? Give them a whole... I give them the whole thing and they have to do the whole thing but it sounds a bit more active. If you can get them I, I, I use yeah. this particular one. You've uh, used this one? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> did it work? Yeah, it did. Yeah. But it was basically it off of them, yeah. so they were sorted on an easy group or a pair, just rearrange it in a loop. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, I think, I mean, uh, I, I think there's a, a really nice variety of activities in these things. Some of them are better than others. This one, um, students were expected to, uh, well, this is information, and then they're going to have to process all this information. This might be spread around the room, or it might be in a PowerPoint or whatever. This one uh, is a personal story about a patient who, who has cancer and is going to be subjected to x-rays and gamma rays, and <coughs> then they're given a task at the bottom there. They have to uh, provide, you know, interpret information for the benefit of the patient. And the last one is, it says, waves use, wave uses quick quiz, so it's just a set of questions, okay? So let's go back to the, my list of things that you need to think about when uh, looking at when looking at worksheets, but also when revising when revising them. As you were saying, the um, when you get a worksheet like this, you often want to do things to it, and make it appropriate to your class, make it appropriate to how you think it should be taught, and so on. So let's go some, through some of these things. This is. Um, what I would call a sort of thinking development worksheet where you can you write notes on there but it's not going to be a final product I've <coughs> I've written a I've written my own things to go in here and I've got copies of that at the, that can give out at the end but you might want to add notes as you go along on your one or whatever um, so topic what does topic mean very difficult all the topic is yeah, so it's the subject matter, the physics subject matter that you're trying to get across. But obviously, you have to have a, you have to think about that in terms of how it fits with um, what you've been doing before and after. Asian ability again, that's fairly obvious. You're thinking about, learners. yeah, who the learners are, what have they done before, how able are they, what sort of demands are you putting on them? Because you, yeah, you, <coughs> you know, any teaching experience has to have some level of demand in it, you know, pushing them on further. You don't want it to be too great, but at the same time it's got to be asking something of them. <coughs> what about this one, motivation and engagement? Stretching. Stretching, yeah. In a classroom context, you want to the engagement of the learners. Yeah. Motivating them to be engaged in the business with children. Yeah, okay. So... It's making them interested. Yes, making them interested. And it, well, if you look about those worksheets, which would you say was the least likely to motivate? Bombs that year nine are not going to want to keep a the last, diary. One. the last, the last one. Yeah, sorry. What were you going to? I think. I mean, if you tell your bombs at year nine, go keep an electromagnetic diary. I don't think. I don't think that would 
uh, yeah. enjoy. But the last one, I think, is you know, sort of higher level, and you, you tend to battle with motivation engagement with with, with lower attainment and ability generally, don't you? So yeah. So more able, they're more likely to be ready to get on with it anyway. A lot of teachers rely on their own, you know, the fact you build up momentum with the class and they're happy to keep going. And, uh, I think it links to both because mm -hmm. even with uh, students of a higher ability, if it's not challenging enough, they're not going to be engaged in it. So um, there yeah. needs to be a level of challenge for them as well. Yeah, yeah. And some of them, some of those worksheets are show different levels of demand, don't they? The, um, the yeah. one about the... The medical history, I mean, that's clearly, you know, somebody has thought about how will we engage these kids with x-rays and gamma rays, and then they've got <coughs> levels of demand down here where, yeah. this is, you know, I find this is a, maybe a bit dubious what's being put here, but at least it shows they're thinking, what c how can we push, you know, put it, show kids that they're doing better, <coughs> doing harder and harder things, so, yeah. So that's... Um, Motivation and engagement. What was the next one? Uh, context. Okay. So, in a way, that's related. Uh, what? <coughs> well, looking at those worksheets, which would you say was anything lacking in context, or increased to me as Syntax errors, the repetition of questions. Yeah, that, the quiz one at the end is completely devoid of context, really, isn't it? It's just, <laughs> you know, you're at school, so you'll answer questions like this. And um, some of them, the context is on the page. Some of them, the context, like the, uh, the woman with, the, with can lung cancer, some of them, the context is probably more in the teacher, you know, what the teacher is going to say to introduce the the activity. Okay, um, what about, um, what does activity mean? Um, what you're actually doing, the task. The task. Yeah, the, th the task that's, that's there. So you then have to think about <coughs> how they're going to work at this. Are they going to be working together in, in groups? Are they going to be working individually? What sort of activity is, is it? It's, and I think there's quite a variety in these Worksheets and isn't there? some of them are more physically active, and some of them are more sit and write and talk and think. Okay, so something maybe a bit more uncertain: scaffolding. What does what does scaffolding refer to? Yeah, building up, building up <coughs> knowledge and understanding, building up. But within a re within a resource sheet, within an activity sheet, you might want to start off with something that they can that will help them get in, and then something <coughs> that will uh, you know, and will give them plenty of steps along the way, and then you might want to remove the scaffolding by giving them something more demanding at the end, or something similar, parallel, but without all the steps laid out, so that they can then feel that. You know, they've learned it in the first half and then they can carry it through for themselves in the second half. Which is something I think is not really obvious in, in these worksheets. So. <coughs> okay, open and close questions. What's the difference there? Yes, yes or no, or factual answers, or yeah, so based on recall really. And the other one opens up the discussion. Yeah, yeah. And can you see what would, can you point to a worksheet here that would be very sort of open? The, the, yeah, the x-rays, yeah. That's a closed, that's a very closed one, isn't it? Except that, I haven't quite, I'm not quite sure what they're asking about. It says true, false or partly true, which is... <laughs> different degrees of truth, yes. Uh, <laughs> But, it, but all it asks you to do is write true, false, or partly true at the, in the box at the end. So, so why, is it, why is it partly true? Yeah, yeah okay. it doesn't, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. They haven't really, it hasn't. But <coughs> it's time to use it, I'll go for true or false, and not partly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could say x-rays, are they going to kill you? Yeah, partly yeah. true. You let someone under an x-ray for yeah. yeah. But yes, it can kill you, but it's not definitely going to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, quite, I quite like that. 
doctrine. Mm. Yes, yeah. well, yeah. yeah, but you want you need to take it further, wouldn't you? Yeah. You would want them to be. Yeah. Yeah, so you need them to, you would w want to ask them to elaborate mm -hmm. on, yeah, on that. Yeah, it's not good for elaboration, then I don't see the purpose of that. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. what do you end up with? Yeah. A sheet of paper, some statements are false and some statements are true and some are partly but true. Yeah. Yeah. Very it's rarely just, just throw a worksheet at a kid, would you? Like, you explain sort of what you're doing. So all of them, I think, have their benefits. Like, it depends how you deliver it and how you yeah. set sort of your work up. Because you're never yeah. just going to go, right, the, uh, do this to a kid like you. That's part of your lesson. Well, you shouldn't do, should yeah. you? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I think it's actually yeah. deliberate. So if you spoke yes. about that partly true bit, you think you know, some of these might not be entirely true. Yeah. And why do you think that is? And it could be quite interesting. Yes. But you were saying, why, you are going to ask them, why is it only partly yeah. true? How are they going to fit that in that little box? It's yeah. uh, well, uh, quite difficult. But it's not the resource is only half the story. It's the, it's the execution yeah. of that, I think, which is the yeah. important, equally as important. And like I said, I yeah. just, I mean, I know a worksheet, to things written down, but I think equally important is some sort of classroom discussion as well, so you can get a discussion from that as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Except, except particularly this particular one was used as a quick fire test, just for the teacher to observe what is going on, rather actually like that. Yes, I don't know, <laughs> you know, if it was me, if I was the student and I was sitting next to you, I'd be looking to see what you're writing down and, and I'd be writing, yeah. <laughs> copying it or maybe so nudging you and saying why have you done <laughs> yeah. that but I'm not sure that you learn that kids learn terribly much from uh, from filling in a sheet like that okay um, all right so formative and summative I'm sure these are the words you've got methods of assessment. well they're methods of assessment yes so and how do they relate to a resource an activity so sheet or one might be helping you form your understanding whereas a yeah. summative one might be testing your understanding yeah. Okay, and if you looked at these particular examples, can you see, well, what would be summative, summative that, la that last, yes, it's a bit of a nerve calling it a quick quiz, isn't it? I mean, I think a quiz is supposed to be fun, isn't it? And, and, uh, yes, very serious and written in a strange order and... Uh, You've got this one, this one can kind of form your understanding a little bit if you've yeah. got the answers there for you. You, kind of yes, you yeah, you've got to then discuss with somebody else why they should be standing next to you or why you yeah. should put this one next to that one. Or yeah. So, um, so, but you need to, you know, the, you need to have decided as you go along whether your work activity sheet is going to be a formative one or is it going to be a summative one or is it going to be formative at the beginning and summative at the end. Um, otherwise, you, <coughs> you can get yourself in a terrible tangle with, you know, I've seen worksheets where <coughs> there are questions, you know, there are three questions that are true, false, and then there's one that requires about two pages of writing, and then there's a diagram that you've got to write some labels on, and you think, well, you know, what is this person's idea of this resource sheet? They've just written down everything they could think about that they might give to their students. And, um, okay, what about gradient and ramping? What what would that mean? Getting harder. Getting harder. Yeah. Well, so. Like saying, like differentiation, rather than having different sheets, which can be quite off-putting for certain students. Yeah. Differentiation by outcome. Yes. Okay. So yes, uh, it's to do with differentiation, but also to do with bit helping to build up the concepts so, so that they are learning as they go go through it, and getting harder as it goes on, um, and. Uh, Okay, so and different students will, you know, you don't want something where half the class is going to get get to question one and that's all they're going to be able to do, but so you do need to <coughs> have some notion of how you're going to get them up the, up the hill. Um, what about uh, language? Any thoughts on language in resource sheet? I'm just seeing aware of my asking a question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or it might you might ask a question in a very convoluted way and often you can you can make things much you can think of a way to make it much simpler. Um, any other thoughts about the scientific language? Yes, that's quite a big issue really, scientific language against layman's language. Keywords. Keywords, yeah. yeah because because, because yeah. yeah. It is a, it's a big problem, and some people solve, think they solve it by 
using everyday terminology, but actually everyday terminology is not doesn't that it doesn't do the job in physics yeah, really, does it? Yeah. You've somehow they've got to get to the point of being able to use appropriate terminology, but then they can be lost. You know, you can lose them very easily if you just have too much of it. Yeah. But if you do just you know try writing down you know. Uh, you know, using some everyday term instead of a technical term like energy or momentum or something, then you aren't you aren't doing them any favours, are you? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the language bit also because I had an experience where I was advised to tune in to the students, uh, use their language, and but then say a word like vibration, which is very sensitive to them. You have to explain something which. Which other word you have to use to, to, to do that? I think language there plays an important role. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you dodge from vibration to use oscillations, or you say move yeah. up and down, it yeah. doesn't really. You, yeah. Give you, the information you, you wanted to deliver, mm. but because uh, it's causing a lot of uh, excitement and fidgeting. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. The language in there, you know, I mean, they, they do kind of acknowledge the fact that every student can use a scientific language. Yeah. So they give you the option of yeah. acceptable example, alternatives. Definition of frequency. This is the first time I had a number of complete weights per second, which uh, use a number of complete oscillations per second. Yeah, okay. So yeah. So. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so they do have to learn definitions, but there's no point in just learning definitions yeah, if they don't have some kind of un they can understand it now, Yeah, that's yeah, that's why they were talking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we could have done a whole workshop on language, really, but um, I think you've mentioned some of the, some of the important points. One of the worksheets, the <coughs> this, uh, which one was it? This one here has these blocks of text that you could that go in the boxes in the table and actually you can save you know if you if kids are doing this on a computer they can you know copy and paste or drag and drop and that kind of thing and that can be a great uh, a great saving to some kids who don't want to spend all their time you know find it difficult to spend all their time writing and you know and, so, and equally there are some some children whose favourite activity is doing nice, neat writing and not necessarily thinking about what they're Some what they're doing, and cutting and pasting and making <laughs> it all look lovely. Yeah. Um, so this is, um, <coughs> but this, as I say, you know, it's it's not a bad thing to be able to take that and stick it in the appropriate box, and then you end up with a, you do it. They've had to think about it to get it there without having to necessarily copy out words that are not terribly familiar. Okay, um, the next one, outputs. What do you think that refers to? What are they producing? Yeah, are they going to produce anything? Because some of these things, like if they stand around the room with those, with the word, the word, the whatever that one's called, the word chain, word loop. <laughs> the word loop. Um, what are they going to end up with? Well, well, you said you've used it, is that right? Yeah, yeah it was like a stutter. Okay, so you weren't too worried about them yeah, producing it, something it at the end? Hung, uh, it was a loop, actually, I cut it out, so as they were pasting it, it formed a complete loop. Yeah. And so it just hung it anywhere. Yeah. One student mainly just put it on his neck. And yeah, okay. So it was kind of just play thing. So there was, well, uh, there's a product in there in the sense that they would have felt satisfied that they got to the end of it. and. Yeah. And presumably it was checked in some way, and uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Some will so form notes as well. Will like will we'll form formal notes for them in their books. Yeah. And some some less so. I mean, you know, it's, it's it's what do you want out of it? Is it the learning? You know, but then are they really going to remember that thing? Yeah. yeah. So sometimes it's better to have a great discussion, and a lot of them will think a lot. But then, you know, <coughs> three years down the line, if you teach the GCC in year nine, despite that thinking, you know, how do they really remember? Or so when they get to the and exam and in year eleven, do they actually go back and read their books, or do they use a revision? You've got to weigh it all up, haven't you? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, occasionally, you see um, worksheets where there's like you know a load of text, and then one or two, 
you know, one or two questions at the end and a little line for them to write their answer on. You think, well, what is the, you know, what was the point of all that if they end up with this sheet with just one thing that they've written at the end? So you want them, you want to think about what is it actually they're going to end up with. It may not be, it may not be anything directly from the sheet. It may be that you will then tag on at the end some talk, talk your way through some notes or you know, draw a conclusion and ask them to write it in their own words or something like that. So, um, and The last thing I put on here was additional resources. What, what might that refer to? Maybe like a help corner or stuff around the room? Yeah, yeah. Do, yeah. Yeah. So, <coughs> so your you may give them a resource sheet, but they may need to, as you say, maybe things around the room in or wherever that they're going to have to draw on in order to complete the activity. Sometimes it may be entirely on the sheet. You may be able to put get everything they need on a sheet, which is quite a good thing. It's good for homework um, mm. because you can't rely on everybody to have access to whatever. But um, <coughs> You've got to think about, uh, yeah, you've got to think, are they going to be drawing on other things and I mean, the other resources might be the people they're working with or whatever. Okay, well, um, all those things, I think there are uh, important things to think about when if you're dividing, well, first of all, if you're writing your own resources, but if you're evaluating somebody else's and thinking about how you're going to adapt it for your own use. Um, <coughs> They don't all apply to everything you do. You know, you aren't. You don't have to do all these. You know, hit all these targets on everything that you produce. Obviously, but you just need to be thinking about it so that you're clear about what it is you're doing. If you just sit and start writing, a, I just write a worksheet on this, and you haven't really thought about about the whole sort of context and what you know. You, actually, my feeling is the most important thing always is to start thinking what's the activity going to be. You know, how are you going to get these you know you've got your physics topic and you've got you've got to think about what's the activity going to be and that really focuses your mind on what uh, how it's going to how it's going to work and it's not always easy to think of a good activity so that's one of the reasons why it's good to look at places like the times ed website and so on um right the next thing i wanted to do was really for you to look at these worksheets again in the light of what we've been talking about choose one and think about how you would how you would improve it how you could make it better so that you got more out of it because some of these i think are a bit thin in terms of what what will come out of them but just by adapting one you might be able to uh, get get quite a lot more out of it and make it more we have mentioned one or two things that could be improvements already but um, so have a look through decide whether you feel could be improved and uh, when you've done that can you suggest work in pairs explain to each other what your idea is and then <coughs> we'll spend in about between five and ten minutes we'll go around and uh, what I would like you to do is explain to us what the other person has thought of as the improvement, which worksheet it is and how they suggest it will be improved. Okay, so if you two could work together when you've, when you've had a look through and decided what it is, then we'll, uh, <coughs> and two and two. <laughs> Okay, I don't know who's been uh, discussing which one. Did anybody uh, choose this one as their example? You did? So you're going to report on yeah. his ideas. So the ideas were, and just a simple <coughs> one would be to change the colours around, just for kids to sort of association. So effects, we think, could be in, should be in red, because especially with sort of gamma rays, it's associated with red for danger, danger yeah. sort of thing. So we'd change the colour around. Um, and then also, they could do this, but we're thinking to combine that and then use the one about uh, the person with cancer as sort of like a, an extension task. All oh so right, yeah, great. yeah, yeah. So, then, so they go through the sort of like the type of radiation, the uses of it. So that's just some sort of general recall, but then move on to this next one as sort of an application of that knowledge then. So that's yeah, sort yeah. of the idea. Yeah, good. Discussed. So, yeah, so 
plenty of. <coughs> did, that, did I miss anything? <laughs> yeah, just reordering, making sure oh, that yeah. uh, you know he started with gamma rays, but I will start with radio waves and coming out all that. Why? Uh, you know, even in the test books, it's, it started with the radio waves and the kids. You know, most often we teach it from radio waves to gamma, okay. gamma rays and uh, yep. show them the training energies and wavelength. Because you want to start with low energy and move up to higher energy, yeah. is that the... So, so okay. They yeah. always know that. Oh. I have seen an exam question though, where they have put them the other way around, but then you rely on the fact, just praying that the kids have actually understood it and not just learned the pattern and sort of left to right. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Well, I'm not convinced that prayer is going to work in this case, but... <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. That's interesting. Yes, yeah, so anybody else looked at this one? No. Okay. Uh, well, we've heard a little bit about this one, Mrs. Jones's medical problems. Anybody tackle that one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, two good ideas you came up with. Um, obviously, this involves writing letters, this question might be a radio um, But what I was actually to have a, some kind of model letter. Yeah, because the the idea of asking to write a letter is quite a daunting thing if they don't can't see something yes. that's a model. Okay. The other one is actually turn this on the head and into a, a kind of an exam question, like an exam question, uh, based on, on this analysis and facts. Yeah, I think you were saying yeah, put a tag at an exam, more of an exam type question at the end, yeah. so that in a way that drags it back to the sort of school learning scenario doesn't it whereas <laughs> this is sort of real world and yeah okay anybody any thoughts about that maybe like a writing frame i know that's sort of what yeah. you're getting out of it but even, yeah. even not just an example because an example they can go ah i know i'll just sort of change the word change x-rays for gamma rays you know but just to write i use sentence starters all the time provide sentence starters because I find, I find a lot of kids they know what they're doing but they just don't know how to get started like they will never know how to get started, so I would just provide a sentence like a, like a writing frame where it's like a, you know you could start with this sentence and move on yeah. to this and this. So you would put are you are you like giving them like paragraph yeah. beginnings and yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. okay um, which one should we look at next? What about the did anybody do the electromagnetic diary? No. Well, I did. My thought was. Actually, that would be quite nice. If, it would be a lot nicer if it was actually a fantasy day rather than, you know, rather, you know, maybe they, you go off to the space launch pad and go up into space and, and whatever. So you've got much more opportunity for, or you go to the hospital, the day you have to go to the hospital and you get x-rayed and you get this, that and the other. And rather than some kind of, you know, because I couldn't, th I mean, I can't think of anything else after those two really, you know. Cook, did my toast with infrared radiation okay so yeah uh did anybody do anything with this one no uh <coughs> the quiz that had one or two people doing things to um, so he suggested oh two people did it <laughs> i did it he did as well. oh you did as well okay well let's hear that let's so uh, hear this one first um, we were doing the questions so maybe giving some of the answers and taking um, out, so like taking out radio and gamma and giving the answer to it from magnetic spectrum. Um, so would you present that then as you would write the answer here and just have gaps here? Is that what you're no, saying? No, no, it's, it's more like stating the facts uh, in terms of these are the components or the members of the radio, uh, sorry, of the magnetic the magnetic spectrum. Okay, so it wouldn't be a question and answer, it no, would be a, it it would be a statement. Fact, yeah. Okay. If you say the idea was With kind of um, help them think about, they might remember it better that way, yeah. rather than have these questions and then just completely go blank. Um, some of the other ones was to um, give them a choice of answers, some even silly answers, so they can pick out um, some mm -hmm. right answers, and using pictures to illustrate some of these concepts like a total internal infection um, because they'll be used to seeing diagrams yeah. and they did yeah. that once. Yeah, for kids who find all the pages of words difficult, just to have a picture gives you the clue as to where you where what you should be thinking about and yeah. 
I think it happens in, in exams. You never really get a question that doesn't have, doesn't have a picture, picture or yeah. graph, something like that. Yeah. The interpretation skills are really important. Yeah. Uh, so on one here, yes, what yeah, was there? I think he spoke of uh, re reordering the equations, making sure they build information as they increase. Yeah. Uh, as actually grouping the equations, grading them, uh, differentiating them by outcome. Yeah. Those equations, not just putting them as a <laughs> They're a pretty arbitrary, they're in a pretty arbitrary order, aren't they? Yeah. They don't even all match the title. Yeah, right. <laughs> they don't all match the title, then do they? Yeah. We'll also try to tweak or change the language uh, even not, not that question 6 and 11 seem to be practicing the same thing, but the, the, the yes. omission in question 8. Uh, so yeah, yeah. And then alter the weather open or close question as well. Yeah. That's what are, they, are these all closed? I can't remember now. Most of them Most of are. Them. You could argue a what can the effects so obtained by what can be an effect of long term exposure to yeah. radiation. I suppose that's sort of open. open yeah. Yeah. I yeah, mean, but the teachers. Also, I suppose yeah. In terms of an exam, they should, they'll have a set mark scheme in the head of, right, if I'm talking about effects, I should have, be able to say these things. But you could make it a more open question, I suppose. But yeah, I was just saying, like I said, group them. Because some of them are characteristics and properties of waves, some of them are more EM spectrum. Yeah. So I would group them. <coughs> Great, so put them in order of sort of difficulty yeah. and how to... Yeah, maybe put little headings in so yeah. that they know where the... Yeah, maybe, you know, put something that, you know, a sort of arrow that gets wider and wider showing it's getting harder or whatever, I don't know. As poor as I think it is, I do think the questions are absolutely quite relevant. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, are. They are, I mean, like they the are questions they about the content that they're yeah. supposed to know, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then lastly, I think... Um, does anybody else want to say anything on that one? And lastly, was um, you two been looking at this one here? Yeah, yeah we, did, we didn't follow our instructions properly, did we? Um, <sighs> so we just discussed it together. We yeah. Really. <coughs> and we actually talked about how we'd execute a bit more as well, didn't we? We sort of got, went off on a bit of a tangent. But um, we, s we said that perhaps that you could have the, um, the question on the floor and you could have the kids sort of around and they could write their name on a little piece of card, and then they put their name as close to the statement as much as they agree. So the more they agree, the closer they put it, and then you can then sort of nominate kids then to discuss, well, like, Dan, why do you think that? You know, why do you think it's true? Choose someone who has you know, yeah. a contradicting opinion. Let them have a discussion, and then, and then mm. we said that um, then they could have moved it afterwards. Yeah, they just have to move their answer if they want to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, well, that's good because often you put an answer down you're told it's wrong and that's it and it's a bit dispiriting isn't it whereas if you're allowed to develop your you know think differently and then act different yeah yeah we, we, we did yeah. say have a discussion before as well so that nobody's just going to sort of like you know sheep going to follow someone else and just put it where they're yeah so they've thought about it and they're ready yeah. to offer something yeah Ooh. i think that much is one scenario i found where kind of uh, yes, on that end, uh, no, there, or partly, mm. and everyone had to move. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. You must move to somewhere, yeah. and if you are moving to somewhere, you must have an, a reason or an excuse. Yeah, so, yeah. It so it sounds interesting. <laughs> and there are, uh, there are, as you say, there are sheep who will just follow <laughs> there, or whatever. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then pick on those sheep and make sure there's no, <laughs> no one getting away with uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. being a sheep. Okay. So, okay, very good. I think um, well, there's lots of interesting points there, and I hope it will help you to think uh, think of <coughs> a bit more about what you you know about what makes good resource sheet and how to go about improving improving them and so on. Um, I should say, why did I why did I make the task think of an improvement? Tell your partner, and they will report on it. Why did I why did I put it like that? Mm -hmm. to, yeah, go on. Uh, to make sure that if I'm listening to him, and then I'm doing a peer correction or peer assessment, not assessment, but building on my own version for me, you're sharing the ideas actually. Yeah, you're sharing ideas. You're, he's, got to, he's got to be clear what his idea is and tell you. Understand. You've then got to be clear what his idea is and tell us, and vice versa. Whereas, yeah, whereas if you, you two, you know, you had a nice chat and you had good, you know, good ideas, but um, 
It's just a way of getting, you know, making, making every individual think, be clear about what they're thinking and then passing it on to somebody else. Okay, uh, it's just, um, you know, in, in passing. Okay, uh, well, we uh, tea and whatever are available in about three minutes' time. So I don't know if anybody wants to add anything more to the dis general discussion. Okay, one thing I would say is <coughs> when you write your own resource sheets, what you're, what you're ending up doing is you'll find you develop your own ways of thinking, your own thoughts, your own style, and it doesn't matter if it's different from somebody else's. That's quite good. You can borrow their things, they can borrow yours. It's good to be in a school where people share resources a lot. Um, it's awful if you're left being everybody doing their own and thinking, I'll get, you know, my class will get better grades than that class because I've done a better worksheet or anything like that. That's, you know, my idea of something not very nice. And um, <coughs> so do, you know, you're learning to find your own voice in writing. In t the same as you are when you're talking about physics in a class. You're finding your own ways of expressing things and tuning into your students and saying things in your way. And that's a very important thing to do as you, as you go on in your career. You will find there are things, some aspects of physics you will want to emphasize. Somebody else, you know, somebody else will, you know, be in their class always talking about Formula One racing cars or something, you know, which may be very motivating, but if it's not you, it's not you. You have to find the things that work for you. And <coughs> I say, I hope you will go on and do that over the years. And uh, if you do that, your students will appreciate it and you're much more likely to get them to want to carry on doing physics in, in life. I'll be just at least being positive about physics as they go on. Um, something else I wanted to say? No, thank you very much for all your contributions. I did want to, one other thing actually was, I forgot to mention, one of the things I'm involved with is I'm the physics editor of Catalyst magazine. I don't know, if, have any of you ever seen it? It's a GCSE science magazine, um, which if you register with the National STEM Centre, you can every, it comes out four times a year and they send you an email and you can get a free copy every time it comes out. So it might be worth looking out for. But it's, again, it's, it's not a, it's not a, it's a sort of background resource really that people write activity sheets to go with and so on. So it's each time, each issue has got about eight articles written by, mostly written by scientists, in fact, about their research work. But aim the editor the editors we spend our time making trying to make modern science intelligible to 14 to 6 year 16 year olds so okay right as i say 25 past it's time for tea and uh, i think that goes on till about 10